What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're talking all the latest following NXT TakeOver War Games, which of course to nobody's surprise, it was an amazing event. You guys already know how NXT usually handles business when it comes to these TakeOver event and what they do is that they basically just take over the whole weekend to the point where they are the highlight of the weekend no matter what the main roster does. Every time there's a TakeOver, everybody pretty much says how in the world does the main roster is gonna follow that up the next night and this sunday we got survivor series which is fully stacked but when it comes to the wrestling aspect of thing i don't necessarily think that they're gonna be able to defeat or i should say completely follow up and be better than what we saw in nxt tonight the show itself was about two and a half hours with almost all the matches being amazing but of course there's some complaints to talk about which mostly came at the beginning of the show so the show actually started off with the debut of Matt Riddle, bro, and he ended up calling out Kajizono to a match, even though he wasn't scheduled to have a match at this takeover. Kajizono came out with a mic and, of course, called Matt Riddle stupid, but also went on to put him over, just like Kajizono always does in these takeover events. If there's something you should know about that you might not realize by now, is the fact that Kajizono's position on NXT is a very respectful one to the point where he is is the veteran and pretty much the locker room leader and every time that he comes out there his job is usually to put over people and make them look good that's why he is always feuding with the guys that are currently getting a push and the new guys in the wwe this match lasted probably two seconds three at best because matt riddle ended up hitting kajizono with a knee to the face and immediately pinned him music hit kajizono was struggling to get up and then we got on to the official first match of the night something i do want to say though i do have a complaint in regards to this matt riddle versus kajizono i like the fact that they put over matt riddle big in this match but them having just a one second type of match is not something that nxc does instead of something that the main roster does and i absolutely hate it i hope that this is not something that nxc starts to do from now on because i just don't want to see it i like to watch nxc takeover because of the wrestling that it gives us and even though this put over matt riddle big it just doesn't have help out the whole show in my opinion nonetheless after this match we had a two out of three false match nxt championship on the line Shayna baszler versus carrie sane and Shayna baszler ended up picking up the victory mostly because of the distraction coming from duke and marina who came literally two minutes after the match started so Shayna baszler ended up getting the first pin for with a clutch then carrie sane follow up with two insane elbow drop one to the outside of the ring taking out everyone and then another one just for Shayna Baszler in which she managed to tie it up. At the end we had Dakota Kai and Shira trying to help out Kari Sane which they ultimately did but in the end Sane attempted another insane elbow drop but Baszler managed to counter it by rolling her up directly into a pinfall for the win. The only issue that I personally have with this match is the fact that there was way too many interference and the match was way too short so it felt like it was just interference after interference and then the match was just over so it came fairly quick especially the first two falls which happened within the first couple of minutes of the match following this match the camera cut away and i thought we were gonna see some crazy debut but we did not instead we saw x-pac show up in the front row with his dog the third match of the night was alistair black defeating johnny gargano and this was such a good match that it definitely woke up the crowd there was good story all throughout the story of johnny Johnny Gargano not necessarily knowing who he is and literally asking Alistair Black to just finish him and then in the end we had Alistair Black hitting Johnny Gargano with two black masks in a row to get a pinfall but before he got that victory he ended up telling Johnny Gargano that he forgives him for his sins so it looks like Johnny Gargano is back again with a losing streak and I'm assuming that up next Alistair Black is gonna go on and get his rematch against Tommaso Ciampa which then after that we're probably gonna be seeing the fallout of Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano. So we got a couple of good months ahead and Alistair Black picking up the victory did make sense although I was going for Johnny Gargano. The fourth match of the night was the NXT Championship match Tommaso Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream and there's a couple of takeaways from this. First of all, nobody clearly loves the NXT Championship more than Tommaso Ciampa and I truly mean it. There have never been 
been a man that loved their championship more than Ciampa. Like, he literally lives for that championship. And I love the fact that he does that. That puts over the NXT championship so much more, even when it's not in the main event. And it puts him over every single time as one of the best heel and champion that WWE currently has. Belveteen Dream is also, of course, amazing. He ended up coming out with an NWO, or I should say Hollywood Hook Hogan, inspire attire. And all throughout the match, he was pretty much paying homage to all the wrestlers in the 90s. Not just Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Macho Man, of course, and so on. I mean, this match was so great all throughout that Tommaso Ciampa ended up losing one of his wrestling boots. There was good story in the match of Tommaso Ciampa just being an absolute heel and doing everything that he can to retain the championship, including exposing the floor, and in the end, hitting Velveteen Dream with a DDT on the steel platform between the two rings. Overall, it was an instant classic, and I do think that it was the best singles match of the whole night. And again, singles match, because of course, the War Games match ended up stealing the whole show, which as it should, because it is the name of the actual pay-per-view, and it is just an amazing concept. Just like the Royal Rumble is, it feels like it books itself. There was an interesting story being told throughout the whole match, especially on the face side of things, where Pete Dunne was supposed to come out second for the babyface team, but the War Raiders, every single time, he ended up getting pushed back, so he was the one that came out last. But this didn't even matter because in the end, Ricochet and Pete Dunne ended up pending Adam Cole simultaneously after Pete Dunne slammed him to the mat with a bitter end, and then Ricochet hit him with a 450 splash. And to end the show, both of these two guys ended up on top of the cage, staring at each of their championships. So are we gonna have these two clash in the near future for each championship? We could easily get a champion versus champions match. Maybe that's what they were teasing. Nonetheless, awesome match. A lot of the guys ended up shining here, especially Ricochet, because when you watch him in this match, he looks like he's just a kid in the playground because of all of the high-flying stuff that he was doing. Munso from the top, you call it, swinging across the ring, you call it, and Ricochet was doing it. Now, in regards to Survivor Series, one of the biggest speculation was the fact that Nikki Cross was probably going to be fully called up to the main roster, and more specifically be part of the SmackDown team, which is currently missing a fifth member since Charlotte is already facing Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch is out. Well, during NXT TakeOver tonight, Nikki Cross ended up having a match with Candice LeRae, which is going to be shown on television on Wednesday. Reports indicate that this match ended up having a lot of storytelling to it. I will not spoil who won the match, but I could tell you guys that apparently Nikki Cross went on and inflicted a lot of pain and extra damage to Candice LeRae. So this storyline between both of them is going to continue, and it doesn't look like Nikki Cross is going to get called up, so it should be interesting to see who's gonna be the surprise opponent. Hopefully it's an actual surprise and not just someone from the main roster that's not gonna make an impact. There was also a report that it could have been Shayna Baszler but of course she ended up retaining her championship tonight so the chances of that happening are very unlikely. And with all of that being said I got a couple of questions for you guys. Let me know down in the comments below who do you guys think is going to be joining the SmackDown team on Survivor Series. Do you actually think that someone from NXT is gonna get called up? Do you think that we're gonna be seeing a returning superstar to the WWE? Or is it just gonna be someone from the SmackDown Live brand and we're just looking way too into this? Hopefully that is not the case. If WWE is end up putting Mandy Rose in there, I'm literally just gonna go ahead and hit myself in the face until probably I cannot feel my face anymore because there has been so many speculations about this. I just want it to be something significant since that is what I'm expecting. Nonetheless, guys, that is what I got for you on this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed or found this informative. If you didn't, make sure to help but drop a like on it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't just yet to be fully up to date. Also, make sure to follow me over on Twitch as we're going to be doing a Survivor Series watch party similar to how we just did one tonight for NXT TakeOver. And if you were over there, thank you for joining me. The interaction was amazing, so I'm pretty sure that tomorrow is going to be even more since even more people are are going to be watching the Survivor Series event. Nonetheless, guys, a window with 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to see you